So today I have AFV's 148th scale, final version Tiger 1. This kit was a piece of cake to put together, comes with the Zimrit right on the model, so there was no decals or any stickers I had to apply. I'll be making this specific A12 Tiger 1 today, and I've been using these reference photos of this Tiger right off the uh, train. You can see it's with the transport tracks, its side mud guards have been removed. It's pretty much just still in transportation mode. And what I'll be doing is just filling in uh, the model, because it's the model's designed to actually include the side mud guards, but I'll be doing some custom modifications. Uh, and you can see the Zimrit, I scraped some off right there, but the Zimrit on this is fantastic for 48th scale, and I would recommend you guys pick up this kit. I think it was only about $20, $23 here in the U.S. Um, when I bought it a couple months ago. But I'll be using the, uh, the hook mounts, you know, for the tow ropes and the assortment tools that you would mount on the side of the Tiger. I'll be going ahead and just, just cut those actual mounts off the already built-in pieces and use that just like it is in the photo. And using a piece of tape, I pretty much just lined it up straight and I'll be using some polystyrene uh, rods. I forgot the exact size, but they're one of the smaller ones. And I'll be cutting out the rectangles for the brackets for where the side mud guards would be mounted. And here you can see the final product. I went ahead and spaced those out in uh, accordance with the picture. And I even lined it up with the uh, in-kit mud guards. So the brackets are relatively straight and the spacing is just about right on this side. And you can see that there were some custom brackets for the ropes and uh, tow hooks, tow cables, all that stuff on the side that maybe didn't come with the kit as nicely as I wanted to. but. You know, once I got these into place, I was just trying to go ahead and refit these. But this kit overall is fantastic, and I'm thinking of picking up the early model without the Zimmerit. Um, but here in the front, you can see how the, the photo has it folded over on the front uh, mudguard. You can't really do that with this kit. I tried it with this one. <laughs> it didn't look great, and I ended up just cutting it off. So let's just pretend it was never there. And overall, here's the other side. It's not as straight, I'll admit. Um, I wasn't as much of a per perfectionist on this one, but I do think it came out splendid, in my opinion. Straight enough. Uh, with the rest of the kit, with the turret, everything put on there, it's coming out very good. I, I do like it, and I wish I had the transport tracks for this kit in 148 scale, just so I could pretty much recreate that photograph. You can see I put the tow cables with the sag that's shown in the pictures. That took some messing around with cement uh, and you know some super glue. They have photo etch uh, engine grills. This kit, like I said, for 48th scale, for like 23 bucks, it's better than most some some 35th scale tigers I've built in the past. In the reference photos, you could see several details. And with these uh, spare tracks that they had, I actually took the existing tracks and I made some milliput molds. Yeah, I used the white and uh, the tan or yellow one as well. Um, and I just pretty much created some duplicate tracks because I didn't feel like buying a whole set of other tracks just for, I think, like six spare. But yeah, I thought this was a nice solution and it turned out pretty decent. If you're not really paying attention, you can't tell that it wasn't part of the kit. And, you know, that's a nice result, I think. And here, you know, you could see the, they're pretty much prepping to lay down the final tracks, uh, the actual, you know, running tracks of the Tiger, which are thick, you know, they got the thick treads to support the weight and the, width of the Tiger was actually about the limit of the uh, rail cars in which they were transported, so that's why they had to be put in these transport tracks when they were transported to fit on the rail car properly without any overhang. But look at that side by side, I think it's coming together nicely. 
And with some additional detailing, I went and put these flame cut marks um, along the usual spots you'd put them on a model. So you just take a hobby knife and you go around where you think the flame cuts for the uh, steel, you know, on the turret there around the edge. And it just adds a little, a little extra detail, not too bad. And even back here, I recommend everyone do this just to improve your model just that much more. I mean, I, I'm just looking at the Zimmerit on this thing, and the fact that it comes sculpted in there. I love this kit. I'm definitely going to be picking up a couple more and working on them, just making some other historical um, tigers from reference photos. So this is where things get real interesting with this build. I was going to prime it with this Tamiya uh, German Grey, and I used some lacquer thinner to go ahead and make it as tough as possible. And I was going to hairspray chip the camouflage onto the model. I don't know if I walked away from the desk, or maybe I just was not paying attention. But I ended up not putting enough hairspray, so nothing would chip. So I ended up just painting it on there and doing some very light chipping with a, a sponge. And I did pretty much all this in acrylics. So you can see the discoloration where the mud guards are. I ended up using Model Air's airbrush line, watering it down, and using that as kind of a, a wash and a filter for a lot of the, the tank. So. This whole tank was pretty much weathered with just acrylics. I really liked the way it came out, so pretty much said everything I needed to, so you can go ahead and enjoy the rest. I'll see you guys next time.